good morning. Um, it's Thursday, it's eight minutes to eight. I'm hoping that every single one of you is out of your bed and on your way to um, revision. So I have just stopped for my coffee um, and thought I'd bang out another video um, as I'm on my way to school where we are going to be looking at paper two poetry. So, um, suddenly he awoke, she awoke and got her coffee. Um, he awoke and was running raw bayonet charge came up um, last year in the summer so near on impossible that it will be your named poem but again it's um, it's a, a good war poem you can use it to compare to another war poem that you're really keen on um, and as I said in the video that I uploaded yesterday it goes really nicely with exposure it's, it's um, arguably the perfect match for exposure so what I'm going to do is, again, go through the poem, do a little bit of a content overview, look at some of the main images, look at the message behind it. Um, but also, as we're going through, I think it would be sensible just to drop in those ongoing comparisons, and I'll explain why in a second. I'm just going to let myself into school, provided my fob works and they haven't locked me out. So give me... Oh. Yay, the gates are open. Um, so, true to form by the way, I've got my coffee cup, let's get a little advert in there from Costa, um, and I know that when I'm old and you're all grown up and the day comes where you're at my funeral, because I know you'll be there, um, I know you'll remember me with my coffee cup in my hands and my messy hair um, and possibly the day that I fell over in class I don't know if anyone remembers that I was um, getting all into it doing my thing quite proud of myself and my teaching like yeah dropping some knowledge and um, yeah my foot got stuck in the wire I dropped on the floor the coffee went everywhere I had about <laughs> I had about four of you help miss help miss four of you come running some of you just sat there Kofi got to the front of the class and just sort of looked at me he didn't quite know what to do and I've gone, the coffee, the coffee. And it was spilt all over the floor. Crazy, crazy. Um, anyway, let me stop and then I can talk really, really briefly. Okay. Sunlight. Oh, okay. So, um, suddenly he awoke. So, true to form with any of the poems and the unseen poem, we'll talk a bit about more about that today. Um, suddenly he awoke and was running raw. So the poem opens, unlike exposure, and what you'll, what you'll notice that I'm gonna do here is consistently throughout um, everything that I'm saying is drop in those little comparisons. And the reason I'm doing that is that I will do that, um, I will do that for you verbally, but when you're in an exam scenario, my expectation for you is that you do that consistently. Every time you say something about a poem, you want to show the examiner that you've got the other poem in mind. So you'll say, you know, unlike that poem, this one does this. Or in, in a less obvious way than the way that we've just spoken about, written about, discussed, um, then this one does it in this way. So throughout the whole thing, you're showing that you are taking a comparative um, stance. So unlike in exposure where the main feeling and the main sense throughout that poem from beginning to end is a sense of inaction. Nothing happens. Bayonet charge contrasts that. Look at the title. Bayonet, I know you know what a bayonet is because you told me so the Call of Duty and all these weaponry. I'm glad that game is good for something. Um, you know, it, they're charging, charging suddenly. It opens with that adverb, that sense of, we don't know what's gonna happen. So suddenly he awoke and it's that action. He has to get on with it. He's running, running, raw. Um, and there's reference to raw seamed khaki. The repetition of that adjective raw, the idea may be, um, again, of physical discomfort in a similar way to exposure. So both poems hint at the idea at the beginning of the poem. In Owen's poem, it's not really hinted at, it's more explicit of um, physical discomfort. Suddenly he awoke and was running. He's in the midst of the action. Now there is a reference at the beginning, and I mentioned this yesterday when I did the exposure video, to the patriotic tear that brimmed in his eye. 
Um, and the mention of that patriotic tear, patriotism as we know, it's the, the love for your country. And it's something that was really cashed in on um, during both world wars, but I'd say more so during the First World War, because you really um, were essentially forcing people to come to the front line and to fight for their country. So you wanted to give them that sense of why they're doing it um, and make them eager and enthusiastic to come along. So the patriotic tear could argue that's a bit of an oxymoron there. Um, or, or that the tear is a reference to the immense love for the country, but it brimmed in his eye. And it's this idea again, like I've said, look at the beginning, look at the end. Is there a turnaround? The reference to the patriotic tear, by the time we get to the end of the poem, the, um, the character's focus there is to get out, and that is a direct quotation from the text, to get out, and it references his terror's touchy dynamite, this idea that he's in this explosive, volatile situation, um, the reference to terror, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's, it's a terrifying situation to be in. So in both poems, we get these poets showing us the realities of war, and how terrifying and how horrifying and horrific it is to be there, which arguably could both be deemed to be political statements critiquing um, the powers, that's, powers that be and the propaganda that they're putting out there. So Ted Hughes, unlike Owen, he wasn't a frontline soldier. His dad did serve in the RAF, so he has some kind of um, a military link in his family. But I think both of them have got something in common in terms of showing us the reality and showing us how that patriotism um, can fade when you're in a scenario where you are expected to, to give up your life. And again, it kind of links with kamikaze. What you'll find throughout these poems is that as you're thinking about them, you can link them to so many other poems within the cluster if that's what you wanted to do. So again, so we open with that sense of action, we open with physical discomfort, um, and we end with this desperation He's, he's dashing for a hedge, <laughs> and he wants to get out of there. And the metaphor that's used is a yelling alarm, a yelling alarm, which I think is quite powerful, really, because an alarm, obviously, is something that goes off to signify danger, and a yelling alarm, this alarm, this metaphorical alarm in his head, is ringing, it's yelling, it's screaming. That inner voice within him as a man is screaming at him to get out, so similar to kamikaze in some ways, to get out, to go home. Um, and simply to survive. And at the end of that poem, it's kind of hinted at that that is possible, that can happen, possibly that does happen. There's still that hope, whereas in exposure there isn't that hope. Our ghost drag home, the love of God seems dying on us, the doors are closed, and we as students, you as students know, that Wilfred Owen didn't, didn't make it out. So there you've got some really nice comparative links between the two. Um, you've got in Bayonet Charge... Um, it doesn't have the, the repetition that Owen has, but nothing happens, but nothing happens. Instead of that, we've got that sense of action the whole way through. So I want to just look at some of the images that are used in Bayonet Charge that you can talk about. Um, one thing that is um, mentioned in the centre of this man's chest, there's reference to molten iron. Iron melted more contrasting images, juxtaposing images there. But Iron, think of Iron Man, don't you, or the Iron Giant. My kids are, are hugely into that at the moment. But Iron's a metal, I've, I'm no science teacher here, but it's a metal that we associate with strength. Um, Margaret Thatcher was known as the Iron Lady. Um, the fact that the, la the lady's not for turning, she wouldn't change her mind on things. She was so um, completely adamant and hard in her views that you, you couldn't change her so she was known as iron iron's a metal that's really really strong when you're revising Shakespeare we look a lot at the metal imagery that's used in there the lead um, and this poem's no different so metal imagery um, is, is used consistently throughout that poem we get the image of molten um, iron that, that his heart and the heart represents the centre of your chest. That's where your heart is. So have a look back at the poem. And we get this image of his heart, his resolve, his strength actually melting. Could that be the patriotism fading um, when he realises actually this isn't my war? Um, that can be further supported by the question that he asks himself. In what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations uh, was he the hand? Was he the one um, fighting that second? Again, you don't need to give that as a, a big, long quotation, but you can put in what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations, dot, dot, dot. Now, the stars 
could be a reference to fate. Is it really his fate? Is it really his destiny to, for him to be the one there fighting someone else's war? Um, again, the nations, that reference to patriotism. Um, what is it that makes him the one that's there fighting that war? So the metal imagery is used on the one hand to give that sense of the iron resolve. The bravery, the strength is diminishing. Um, but the cold clockwork, again, it's got quite an alliterative quality. The adjective cold, that heartless feeling, perhaps like Owen, he feels that he's out in the cold, he's been forgotten, no one cares, he's on his own when he's out there. Um, and the cold clockwork, clockwork gives an image of something being really mechanical, that he may feel that he and other soldiers are like, just simply like a cog in a machine. It's clockwork, it's mechanical, it's machinery. There's no human aspect to it. King, honour, um, dignity, that the, the technique of listing is used there, but they dropped. We talk about, you know, drop it like it's hot, really. They dropped, drop like luxuries in a yelling alarm. So suddenly, all of those things that seemed really important, when it comes to it, when you're in a scenario where ultimately it's life or death, Perhaps then, very much like Kamikaze, you realise what's important and you drop all of that and um, it becomes a sense of survival. Um, on a bit of a deeper level, I don't, none of my students um, mentioned this last year when Bayonet Charge came up. I said, oh, did you mention the hair? Did you mention nature? No, they forgot. And they did well. They did well not mentioning it. But um, it's interesting. And when I first read the poem, I didn't really get what this hair reference was about, this, this yellow hair. Um... But I'll talk about that because I think my memory is about to run out. So I'm going to sign off here. Um, but I'll come.